Saturday. Christmas comes early. Unbelievable! Welcome to this incredible scene. Bills. To the end zone! Chargers. It's a touchdown! An exclusive NFL game. This is fantastic! Live in primetime. Wow! Only on Peacock. With a Christmas gift to their fans. They're having some fun now. Bills versus Chargers. Saturday, 7.30 Eastern. Exclusively on Peacock. friends welcome to pod maverick group therapy my name is kirk henderson i'm editor-in-chief over at mavsmoneyball.com i am finally getting around to posting the link in the chat here on the youtube live that will let you join this uh, particular show um, with me for those of you who may be new remember it's a pretty simple process of clicking that link here it's in the pinned messages now. Uh, look for, you know, Pod Maverick, a Dallas Mavericks podcast, and then a live stream. Um, so it's like a stream yard URL. Um, we'll talk about whatever you guys want to tonight because it seems like a lot of people are way more fired up than me. And maybe it's because I'm tired, but I don't know. I'm uh, still kind of working my way through these these uh, Mavericks. Being 9-5 and five feels pretty dang good to me. Um, you can, you know, as Krishna is noting in the chat, you can join using your phone or your computer or a tablet, whatever you want. I'm going to pull up Micah here first, who looks like he's out and about town, which makes me a little worried on his behalf, but that's just fine. He knows what he's doing. Micah, what's going on? What's going on, Kirk? Wow, I'm the first one here. Yep, that's... I'm a professional. I know how to drive the lane, just like apparently the Sacramento Kings. Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, first of all, yeah, no one's panicking and freaking out. I mean, overall, look, we're we improved from last year. Hell of an improvement, absolutely. Uh, but the issues are still glaring, and I, I kind of want to get your thought on a couple of different topics. I mean, I've been brewing since, been watching all seasons, and haven't said anything, but just have a couple of questions now after our. What is now? We're 15, 14 games in? 14 games, 14 nine and games. five. So 14 games in. First off, um, are, is Dallas the most hated team by the NBA refs? Is the refing system completely comprised of yeah, Kyrie Irving haters? Because I literally watched Kyrie Irving literally get blitzed, haymakered, like knocked to the ground, tackled in the air all throughout the game. And this has been the worst I've seen throughout the whole season. They have literally just been allowing him to be abused. I'm used to it with Luca, but dang, Kyrie too? Really? The Kyrie the stuff is so ridiculous. difficult because he's so – like he uses his athleticism in a way that few other players I've ever watched do because he hangs in the air like a second longer than everyone else. At least it feels that way with some of the shots that he gets off. And I wonder if the refs often are like waiting to see if the ball will fall before getting calls because sometimes he just gets broadsided. I really don't understand it myself, but I also don't think it's I, I don't think it's that bad yet. And I think it'll get better as the year goes on. Kirk, I don't, I don't, I, I think it's that bad already. Literally, when you let he got tackled, there's a play in the second or third quarter where he literally got tackled in the air, tackled to the ground in the air and no whistle sounded it's literally like the referees just don't like dallas I hate well i can't imagine why they wouldn't like I, I i can't imagine why they wouldn't like dallas luca just berates uh, them in multiple languages throughout every game i mean because they treat him the same way but i understand if you got against luca you got against luca it's at least treat the game like a like a profession sure i've never really seen Kyrie get chatty with refs i i don't understand why he's not getting more calls i i i, I do agree with that at least on the Kyrie part um and he's a star for years and years so it, it makes no sense of disrespect that he's getting on the court 
uh, other than that, um, I love Derek Lively, but Derek Lively isn't the answer right now. I love Derek Jones Jr. and I love Grant, but they're not the answer right now. Do we need another wing or do we need another center in order to get this defense tied up? Because honestly, my opinion, we need another large wing because we need someone who can stay in front of people so that way our center can actually do his job effectively and not constantly leave his man wide open for a quick drop-off pass and a dunk. Like, we, we don't have anybody that's staying in front of anyone right now. And I, I love the one at it, but it's, it's I think of the, of the two of them, the need is more in the wing category, um, though I think that the, the, the kind of supply and demand of the NBA would mean that a big would probably be easier to find um it is really painful just watch josh and i just talked about this for 20 minutes it's it's so painful watching every single person that that can dribble a basketball in a straight line just immediately get into the paint they just have to have somebody that can slow them down a little bit because like lively i i think you said he's not the answer right now I think he is, and and I, I I think that the last three to four games, he's looked worse than he is because he's kind of getting hung out to dry by his teammates not being able to guard anyone. Yeah, and that's what I mean by he's not the answer. It's not that he's not a solution. He's just not the answer to – we can't just say, okay, Derek Lively, sure. go out there. All right, our problems are fixed. He's right. not the answer. That's it's, true. We, we put a great piece in position, and he's up to 30 minutes a game. I'm happy. Couldn't imagine. I I really couldn't have imagined that at the beginning of the season. So it's it's they they just need every single person. I'm sure Kid is going to get into their ass a little bit. It sounded like it in the post game comments, where it's just it's it's like defend a little better, twenty percent more of the game, and maybe we might win. We never know. Okay. Last thought: Do you think Kid is force feeding Josh Green to try to get him back in shape, get his confidence back up, because? He wasn't playing him a lot the past few games, and then last game and this game, it seems like he's been like making an emphasis on getting Josh Green as many minutes as he can possibly squeeze him. When Exum is arguably doing better, um, and DJJ is definitely doing better as far as metrics are concerned. I mean, it just it feels like he is trying to give Josh every chance he can because you can't trade him. <laughs> until next season so it, it feels like he's I don't know like he's just trying to do his Jason Kidd thing of encourage him back into shape and unfortunately it has some ugh results but it feels like that's his aim right now I'm not sure yeah and I, I think I, I tend to agree with the strategy to be quite honest because you know Derek Jones Jr. has had two off games in a row and that's where you see the value of Josh Green performing well i mean he had a slightly better game tonight but he's in his own head and it really kind of it, it makes me almost feel bad for him there was a kick at there was a kick ahead pass and i want to say it was the third quarter from luca to josh and he was in the left corner so at the top of your tv screen i saw josh green pass fake to the baseline i mean literally like the cheerleader there's nobody fucking there because you're you're in the farthest point of the corner just shoot the damn ball man he pound yeah. fakes like Ugh, like stop pump faking, shoot it. Sorry, I'm mad. The pass fake to nobody. Yes, I saw that, and I was just like, just put it up, Maxi Kleba. Just put. Oh, that, that's not Maxi. That's Josh. Just put the ball up, please. Right. Please. <laughs> that's right. Oh uh, yeah, and poor Rashawn Holmes couldn't even get any minutes in on his team until the end of the game. That's just embarrassing. Nah, I don't. I don't think kids ever gonna play him. Uh, and that 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 just sucks because you have a weapon and you just don't want to use it at all. But uh, whatever. I mean, hey, hey, nine to five. Can't complain about that. It's pretty good. We're still we're still doing doing good. Micah, and I think you'll see this game get together later. So hopefully, Micah, you drive safe. Thank you for kicking us off tonight. Yes, sir. Have a good one. All right. Talk radio. That's what this is now. All right, we're going to go next to uh, to Tyron, who's joining us again for the second straight night, but I'm assuming these earlier games are working out for your schedule. What's going on? Not much, man. How you doing? I'm all right. All right. I might have to hop out of here and hop back on. I got a special guest here with me. <laughs> sure. No, I understand. I understand. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I, I just a couple of observations of tonight's game is uh, I was watching it with my son, who's eight years old and kind of learning the game, and he told me, he said, Daddy, Luca has three moves, and that's it. 
And I was kind of like, uh, well, what are they? He said, well, daddy, he, you know, does the ball fake and he shoots the three. Or he'll do the step back shot three. Or he'll drive in the middle and kick out. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so I'm thinking in my head, you know, if an eight-year-old can figure that out, surely these other teams can figure it out. And, I, you know, he's been doing this now for so long. And don't get me wrong, this isn't me bashing Luca, but, I mean, because he's damn good at what he does. Oh, it works. Like, yeah, yeah, it worked. But, you know, when you got the rest of the guys in the team – not contributing is not that hard to defend, obviously. And I feel like that's kind of what happened tonight on top of, you know, the Kings got out and ran. They were running tonight. Yep. Like there was there were certain sequences where it was like, you know, watching a ping pong match. Like, you know, the ball was just going back and forth across the court and we got beat there too. And it just blew my mind that one. Sorry. No, that's right. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it, it, he speaks for us. Yeah. But it, it just blew my mind that like Jason Kidd never took the you know the time to take a timeout and kind of regroup, slow the ball down or anything. They just kept running, 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 running. It's not our game, you know what I mean? So I don't mind them when they're running, but one of the problems that they were running into was it was Josh Green and it was mm-hmm. Derek Jones Jr. that were missing their attempts while running. Right. And it was like oh all of a God, sudden the yeah. game went from like eight points to like fifteen. Yeah. And it was like ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I'm not really a stats guy, but I would love to see how many uh, bunnies we missed tonight. A lot. I mean, yeah. that like the the Luca part of it. Luca's shot was a few was it was about three to four inches short on every attempt, and you could see like anytime you're front rimming like that, it, that's a painful thing, painful way to go. Yeah, and he just didn't have it, and and it's you know. Everybody was pretty inefficient tonight, and they it was just like, it was like a death by a thousand cuts game. Like Kyrie, I think was the only one who shot pretty close to fifty percent on volume. Yeah. I think, and yeah, it was it was a tough game. And let's be honest, I mean, I know we're fans first, you know, but let's let's look at it from a human aspect too. They've had probably one of the most fucked up schedules I've seen. Not not competition wise, but travel wise, I've seen in a long time. Like these see, guys are probably just tired. Like let's let's see. Brad Townsend did that, and I sort of lost it on the last show because I'm just mm-hmm. like, you knew about that in advance. But yeah. then there's also the secondary thing that I'm very pleased with, in that compared to last year, we didn't get Luca games. Like Luca was resting eight games into the year. He's played 14 straight. Kyrie's yeah. played 11 of 14, and those three that he missed were because of injury that he has since sort of battled through. So it's like when you look at that and then I look at the schedule, I look at the, the the end result. When I pull back, I'm not really mad. But the, these last two games have left a little bit of a stink taste in your mouth because it's yeah. just it's like you're yeah. losing like you're losing to clearly better teams. And like you would love to see them win a measuring stick game where you can go, OK, OK, yeah. we've taken real progress, pro, you know, real steps here. I just haven't seen it yet. Yeah. I, I still feel, I mean, we lost these last two, obviously, but I do still feel like we're trending in the right direction. And two, that we can learn a lot from these games uh, still. The season is still very young. You know, we got uh, a pretty uh, a new team. These guys are still trying to learn each other and, and gel and all that kind of stuff. I don't know if they're all going to be here. Right. <laughs> Coming in the next couple months, we'll see about that. But, uh, I mean, I, I still feel pretty good about things. Uh, but like I said, with, you know, Luca doing Luca things and the rest of the guys kind of falling asleep, we're just not that hard to to play against, yeah. you know. I want Luca to – I know he's more than capable. I'm not saying this is his fault, but I would love to see Luca learn a few more tricks. I know he can, and I, I can't wait to see what that could be. Well, I mean, last night he shot a lot of mid-range shots that they gave to him, and they all went down. His yeah. post moves are pretty unbelievable when he gets down there. I hate one thing I sort of hate that he does in the post is he spins middle because he thinks he's going to get that contact call when he's bumping like he's Dirk. He just doesn't get it. Nah. He, I mean, there are games where he'll get like three or four of them, but he's he doesn't have the same lean that Dirk does, nor is he seven feet tall. So he's right. getting these bump shots. It's like tonight, those are the ones that were all going off the front. Where when he spins to the baseline and he's basically got the defender on his on his shoulder, he is a bully ball monster. Yeah, I just I, I love watching him yeah. in the post. I, yeah. I I really do. But you know, I, I do feel like he goes to the well with certain moves way too often. Like yeah, um, Jonathan Sharks, my my friend at the Ringer who passed away last year, he re- he referred to the step back three as the coward shot. 
Yeah. And I, when Luca takes like seven of them, I can't like I can't yeah. even though it goes down, I can't get out of my head. I don't agree with that take, but it's like it lives in my mind. And it's just when Luca gets somebody on his shoulder, like when he's gotten past them, I think a lot of times he slows up to try to get that contact. Yeah, and he's just so damn strong, like LeBron. He's not going to get the call. Nah, so it's like not. go all the way and go to the rim. You know, somebody somebody yeah. asked me the other day if I thought he goes to the rim less. And I said, I think he's choosing to go to the rim less because yeah. he doesn't want to take the abuse there. Yeah. And, and uh, I, can I, you blame him? No, I really, no, I really can't. And that's yeah. where I think, you know, some of these things, what we're seeing, you know, the kickouts that are all for the good, like when the threes are falling, we don't care. We've just had yeah. a couple of games in a row where they aren't. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, like, I 100% agree with all that. I just – the step back three kills me sometimes. When it sure. when it goes in, great. But like you said, when you start chunking like seven, eight of them in a row, it's like, bro, please stop. Sure. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Just, just stop. Uh, and, and just one last take. And, again, I'm not I'm not bashing Luca. I just feel no. like there's, there's we're only, you know, touching the tip of the iceberg when it comes to his talents, and I just can't see, wait to see what else uh, comes Well, they've, they've, the offense has been a little ugly the last few games, and I wish they would dip more into the bag and use some things that they haven't shown a lot of. Like, their right. last game there was a Kyrie Luca pick and roll. We just haven't seen much of that, and I get why, because you don't want to have a ton of tape of it. But I, I – there's elements that I would like to see more of. Like I, John, uh, Dwight Powell almost gave me a heart attack tonight playing in the, he was often the screener for yeah. Luca with lively out. He got yeah. the ball at the free throw line a few times and almost shit himself. And Powell's usually pretty good at, at decision-making off that, that, that line. He drove, he, he had, he had like a free path to the basket at one time and drove in and stumbled out to a Derek Green. I think it was Derek Jones three yeah. that actually went down, but it was yeah. like, Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, they're, they're, I don't know. It's 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 something else. Um, man, I have a question for you. Yes. Are you the kind of parent that can only hold their child in one arm, and it feels no. I can't hold my child on my right arm. I feel like I'm I'm like what is that? So as a result, I this my left arm, which I hold my child in all the time. I I can't. I'm like getting nerve damage. Like I can't because I'm constantly <laughs> like this. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I, I've, I've learned to use both arms, but I'm definitely more comfortable with my right. I just can't. I'm such a. It's driving me crazy. I say it's like when you're doing these feedings every two hours. Every now I'm like, why is my shoulder hurt? Oh, my shoulder hurts. I didn't move it for almost. Like, yeah, yeah. And hey, you don't think they're that heavy, but uh, yeah, when they're a brick in your arm for most of the day, it kind of wears off. Right. <laughs> That's right. Well, thank you for joining for the second straight day. I appreciate I got, your time. I got one, I got one more. Oh, thing. sure. I, I'm sorry. I, I just want to point out the hilarity of Javale McGee getting mixed up with Tim Hardaway Jr. in the first quarter. Come Javale on. McGee kind of punked us tonight. <laughs> And I don't like it. I was really mad at that. To me. Oh yeah, that that interaction was great because it's like he somehow had like a grill mouthpiece in too. Like there was a lot going on with Javale. I, he, I and, love it. <laughs> we need more punchiness to Mavs games. All right, man. Thanks for joining. All right, take care. All right, we're gonna go to Krishna next. Krishna, what's up, buddy? Kirk, how are you? I'm good. Um. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know where to begin with this one. I'm kind of glad I haven't been super, like, not. I don't want to say not invested. I am invested in the team. But I'm trying not to let, obviously, these games, like, you know, take over every single day. This was definitely a frustrating sure. game. And I think I've been trying to look at what these teams, num- what the team's numbers were in 21-22. Because I feel like even in that season, the defense to start the year was pretty bad sure. i don't think it was this bad but it was pretty bad and i think this team has more personnel issues but you and josh have mentioned it right like it's finally been the roster turnover this team has needed yeah but roster turnover is going to come with issues it was never going to be easy this was stuff that should have happened in luca's second year but has it and it's 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 just been a delayed change and for as much as, you know, I agree, I think everyone, we all want to see, you know, an OG, a, a Mikhail Bridges, Pascal, Pat Williams, name whoever it is, a, a wing, a center, who it is. But I think even if you put one of those guys on this team, I don't think it doesn't solve all, our, all of our issues. I think it improves it, right? I think we get better, but I don't think it solves the issues. And then I think you kind of go back to the same thing you have, right? If you're trading a ton of players and a ton of picks to for one guy, how do you improve the roster again right. from there? 
Right. Um, like I like it, the, the the these the, the Mavericks depth has pissed me off for the past two games, but I by mm-hmm. and large like the depth. I just want someone either to do better or in a specific mention of, of Dante Exum, a guy get more fucking minutes. Like <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think Exum has I think Exum should get more minutes. And I think especially some of the it, it felt weird. The rotations at the beginning of the season felt good. And now they're just feeling really wonky. And it feels like he's kind of just putting lineups out there to put them out there instead of real thought and decide like it feels like a reversion to last season. Um like I the beginning of the fourth quarter was such a weird lineup. Like you had Dante, Kyrie, uh Derek Jones, and I think Dwight. And someone, I, maybe it was Grant out there, but I don't remember. And it was it was a weird lineup because Kyrie was really the only guy I would have felt confident in shooting a three. And you were down so much. And I, mm-hmm. I get it. It felt like some of those lineups last season where I was like, oh, I'm going to a defensive lineup. And it felt like, like I, I don't know really how much more defense it, you're going to improve with that lineup. But it is a long season, so I'm not necessarily going to overreact. And I think – some of the calls for Omax to play, I think, are interesting, but I also feel like it's the same. It feels like a lot of repeat. I don't see where Omax ha- like one of the Omax is a pretty incredible defender, but where he best served his time in college was basically shutting down a guy off ball. He had very few blocks, very few steals because he would essentially play like shut down corner and take a guy out of the game. The Mavericks are getting crushed on their help. You know, they're, mm-hmm. they're getting beat on single dribble stuff where a guy decides to put his head down. I don't necessarily think he would hurt that, but I don't think he's like the the, the solution that's like waiting in the wings. No, maybe he is. I would like to see him try, um, but it just, it. you know, the, the point of atta- attack defender was largely supposed to be Josh Green based off of, you know, coming in from the Olympic, not the Olympics, um, the World Cup and looking looking really good and just hadn't been it so far. Maybe no, I agree. Back. I No, I agree. I think in the summer, I kind of pointed out what we wanted, right? The hope was Josh and Omax. I, I don't think it'd be that now, but you want them to replicate what Reggie and Dorian did. Where Reggie was your POA defender and Dorian was more of your man defender. Dorian had, you know, whoever was seemingly the bigger wing threat on the team. Um, not to say that either of those guys are that they're not, or not to say that that's what you're doing. You're not, but that was more realistic of what it was expected. Right. And I, I don't think it's that Omax couldn't do it, but I think he's, he would be better utilized in that way where he's like a man, like if, if you're going to football, he's a man to man guy where he's not like a cornerback that stays on one side. He just follows one receiver the whole game. That's yeah. what he would be. And you would match his minutes with someone. And I think Omax's defense, I think it is closer to NBA level, but his offense is not there yet. And I, and I think that's fine. And I feel like it's fine that at least the team is trying to protect him in the sense, like they're not trying to throw him into the fire and then like yeah. let him burn. And it feels like, and, and then he just gets burned and like, his right. confidence if, gets if a broken. rookie is, if a rookie's the solution to your problems, your team has more issues. Yeah, and I think we all look at lively, and so I think everyone feels like, oh man, oh Max, like he he must also be ready to go. And I, and I don't blame people. Like lively has been surprising, even by my standard. Someone who was really high on lively, who I thought he could contribute, but I I think part this just comes with having a really young team, a team that is it's an incomplete roster, it's an incomplete team, and part of it is just you know, improving the roster over time. And, and, you know, I'm with you in the sense, I don't really want us to see us trade first round picks because it feels like this team has always tried to take the quick fix uh, solution and it hasn't really worked for a long, long time. And yeah. I do want us to be a little bit patient and, and I get it. We all want, we like, I want to win a championship as bad as anybody. I mean, it was fun just to see one team in the Metroplex win a championship after 12 years. I, it'd be great to see another one do it, but the frustrate I think it's always important that this team is it needs to be patient in a way, right? And some maybe an opportunity comes in a trade, right? But I feel like a lot of the trades I've seen, it feels like trading another team's okay pieces for our okay pieces. And I don't necessarily completely know if that's going to fix it. And it's also a very, very long season, Kirk. Like yep. You know, tw- I always think back twenty one, twenty two. No way in the beginning of January anyone thought we were going to pull off. The oh, at all? Kid. I was calling for Jason Kidd's ass at twenty games. No way. And like, 
I think there is room for improvement. I, I do think that it's still positive that the offense is still working, right? It's so weird to me that in the offseason, people questioned Kyrie and Lucas fit. I'm like, I'm glad that's ba- that's basically been silenced. Like I should not hear any more thoughts about, Oh, like agree Kyrie and Luca, like do they fit like that? I felt like that was ridiculous. Even in the off season, that's completely ridiculous now. And I think for me, the thing I have been thinking about is I look at like someone like the Denver Nuggets and I, I need to always put this in perspective. Like no championship team is built like another team. Like it was so funny to me after the Warriors, you know, one in 15, everyone was like, Oh, you need to do it. Like the Warriors, you need to draft. It's like no team ever replicates another team's success. Yeah. How they get to that championship, but you can take pieces of what they do. And right. part of what I took from like the nuggets is it took them quite a while. Like you think about it, they didn't, they made the conference finals in the bubble and then they didn't even make it out of the first round the next two years. Like, but part of that t- team getting success was being patient with players they drafted, but then also just finding the right opportunities. Like Aaron Gordon, when the Nuggets traded for him, was a good player. Right. But he was seemingly a bad player because he was the number one option on a bad That's team. Right. And so part of it is I know everyone wants to go for all these really like the, the two, the one piece I really see a lot is. Patrick Williams and then obviously OG. People but, haven't actually watched Patrick Williams play if they want to trade for Patrick Williams is my take. And, and to me, it feels He's like stinky. sorry. <laughs> to me, it, it it feels more like us hoping rather than having a real belief that these are things that can improve your team. Right. And so I, I don't know. I think I'm just a little Drummond bit help, though, just because Drummond's the size of a house. Sure, sure. I and I think it's all opportunity cost, right? Sure. Like if it's like right. you feel like, hey, we're gonna give up something, I don't think it's really gonna affect it, then it makes sense. And I don't know. I think I'm just gonna be patient with it and you know we're nine and five. Nine, nine and five. It's a if very, we get under five hundred, then let's everybody really talk about trades. Like like let's yes, get five hundred and start to really be in the shit and, before we talk about trades. That's where my and, head actually is. And the thing is, like I can't think of a team that makes in season trades and then those trades significantly change the the like right. that team in that season i think they make an impact do me, me wrong i don't think they don't change anything but the idea that we're going to trade for someone and then our defense is going to go from 25th to 15th instantaneously for trading for someone i don't think that's going to happen i think trades usually it takes like in that season some time and right. then the next season to improve so you know i'm not in any rush it'll be exciting we'll see how wednesday goes it's weird the scheduling is just weird but i don't there's no complaints. Like it is what it is. Every team has a stretch where it just feels like this is terrible scheduling. You put it aside. You have to play. Like if you're playing these games, you have to play them. Like that's it. Like there's no yep. excuses at that point, but really just take it as it goes and we'll see. I mean, maybe you were completely different on Wednesday. So uh, you know what? Just take it as it goes. That's right. Awesome. All Thank right, man. Thanks. Take care. Oh yeah. Thanks for hanging out. Um, if anybody wouldn't mind hitting the uh, like button on the stream, would very much appreciate that. Uh, you know, these these um, podcasts that we do, these live ones, I think they're still pretty high barrier for entry compared to the um, Spotify live. I think a lot of folks didn't, you know, the video element sort of freaks people out. But um, I really would, uh, you know, appreciate uh, those of you who have joined and would consider joining. We like talking basketball. Um my, my friend Ben Thompson often talks about uh, touching grass as a movement, saying way too many of us spend too much of our lives in front of our computers not talking to real people. And that's what this will aim to break. Um, if you also wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe button, leaving a review, leaving a comment on this, not necessarily in the comments during the live show, but after the fact on the video, going back and just leaving a quick comment really helps me. We're driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, according to a recent Indeed survey. One of the things I love about Indeed is it makes hiring all in one place so easy and streamlined so I can spend more time on the rest of my business. 
Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences. So the more you use Indeed, the better it gets. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Just go to Indeed.com slash BlueWire right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash BlueWire. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Okay, coming up next, I'm going to bring up Micah. Micah, who uh, is we, one of my friends sent me a screenshot of you on the of you and me talking last night and it was you you only had the top half of your head and it was like it was like how my it was like how my dad used his facetime where i'm like dad pull it away pull it anyway how you doing <laughs> oh good kurt um yeah like i just got a pixel eight so i need to find earbuds that that work with it I've tried to use my earbuds and like well, we're not getting any echo, so we're we're doing okay. They they I know it sends you that warning with the Android where it's like, oh, your your users on an Android, there might be an echo. I would I would punt you if that was the case. This works, this is working well. All right. Um we're just uh we're dealing with the same issues. Um I I would tend to disagree as um it's hard to really understand what the impact of a real wing that de- that defense point of attack actually does for your defense. Yeah. I mean, we saw it last year. It we went from 14th in defensive rating all the way to 26th based off of one player. Like that's pretty much what you're looking at with And, like, we saw the big difference, I mean, with the Pelicans even. Herb Jones is a difference between them getting slaughtered by us and them slaughtering us and then beating Denver the very next day, even though Denver's not looking that great without Jamal Murray. They're kind of, like, it's. Growing it's pains called, for them. It's it's going to be super annoying because they're going to they're going to keep winning at a rate, and then when he does come back, they're going to be a more complete team, and then they're just going to mow everyone down. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's part of having a complete team, Kirk. It's just yeah. what it is. Dude. Like, um, I keep on thinking back. Like, I mean, I've been watching the NBA for thirty years now. I. I can't think of a championship team with a small wing. Yeah. I just, I can't. Like, we won ours, we won with Sean Marion at 6 7. And it's still criminal that he never made it all defensive team. Yep. Um, you don't win without that kind of guy. You keep on, and like, if you look like pretty much because we got Grant Williams now, it's kind of, Basically the same build as Draymond Green in a lot of ways. And their team doesn't work without a big wing. So if you can't guard a point of attack, I don't care if you got prime to Kimbe Mutombo back there. I agree. You're not fixing shit. I agree. Because it, it it causes so many other cascading problems that it doesn't matter how good lively is. It doesn't matter because no. You know, the, the Giannis is one thing because Giannis is sort of his own problem. But like when you see these smaller guards getting the lane and you're riding that guy's shoulder, it's brutal. It's brutal. It, it, there's nothing they can do once the defense is broken down other than hope for a missed shot. We're seeing the same thing with Milwaukee and they got freaking Giannis and Brooke Lopez. Yeah. We got our, our season high points in the paint came against them. Yep. Because they can't guard a point of attack. So if you if you don't got that guy, there's like there's pretty much like two or three guys in the league that you can get away with that having a smaller player and they're just like 
your premium like point of attack guards like Drew Holiday, um, Alex Caruso, um, probably like Derek White even. So if you don't have that guy, you you better have somebody that's six eight or you're just with a wingspan and you're just gonna get cooked. And I think that's like that's our biggest issue is both of our small fours are bench players. Like yeah. we're just being honest. I I like what Jer- Derek Jones Jr. has done this year, but he's a bench player. Like that's just what bench players do. They're kind of inconsistent. They'll have their off and on. He's better suited as a 15 to 20 minute guy, not a 30 to 36. Right. And same with Josh. And you can't, you can't really put a coherent, um, starting lineup together that way. Yeah. And like, I think that's where a lot of Jason kids frustration is coming from is he knows he doesn't have that, that one piece that he wants. He, he knows he doesn't have that Dorian type player and to really complete the defense. And I think that's it's just where we're lacking. Yeah. Patrick Williams has been stinky. Um, I'd love OG though. Hell, I'd even take Slobo to be honest. I just, I don't, I kind of think this is who we got. And I think it's just going to be one of these years where we're frustrated and they try to do something else to fix it in the off season. I mean, it, it, right. I think they'll win enough games to where this will be consistently frustrating, but we're kind of on pace to win 50 right now. If they win 50 games, all of us would be that's, super psyched. I, for me, that's kind of what I'm looking at. Like, I'm not trying to switch up from what I said this at sure. the beginning of the season, right? Like, if I didn't think they were a contender before the season started, what am I getting mad about that they don't right. look like one? Like, you you don't go from a team that missed the play-in to a championship team in one offseason. That's just – that's not – that's not realistic. At all. Right. <clears throat> right. Well, appreciate you hanging out with us. Yeah, hey, anytime, Kurt. All right, we'll talk soon. Coming up next is my guy, Brandon, and then we're going to go to Brian, and then we'll close it out a little, uh, you know, relatively uh, re- relatively quick tonight. All right, Brandon, what's up? What's going on, Kurt? Nice uh, early-ish evening, at least. I'm, I'm glad about that. Yeah, it was a good sports day, some good games and some some good good basketball games too, so can't complain. Yep. Yeah. Um, man, I mean, I'm I'm kind of like, you know, that those five losses aren't bad. So, you know, you take what you can get and just kind of hope that they can, you know, make some type of adjustments. But you know, Kirk, I was looking at some of their stats and I noticed that Dallas is, you know, just efficiency wise, they're like the one of the best, you know, third quarter teams in the NBA, but what's, what's interesting is, you know, I was looking at their, their wins and losses is all of the teams that they play are very competitive against them. So they're actually scoring about the same amount as, as Dallas. Right. Or, more, or either more, you know, they, they kind of blew out a couple of teams, maybe three teams, they blew them out in the third quarter. But besides that, you know, Dallas is, you know, they're, they're on pace with these teams. And it just seems like to me, that's a halftime adjustment being made by those teams because, you know, if Dallas is one of the more efficient third quarter teams and in, in these teams that they're playing are, you know, kind of playing up to par with them, that just means that they're doing something that other teams aren't able to do. And it seems to me that that would be, you know, playing up to Dallas level. And I've yet to see Dallas – well, I've seen them, but I've yet to see Dallas play up to – you know, the level of other teams because they give up a lot of points. And if you think about it, third quarter, they, you know, the, the they almost gave up a hundred points before the third quarter was over. You again, know. again. Yeah, that was, and, cool. and it's, it's, it's just crazy. Like Dallas isn't playing up to the team's level. The teams are playing up to Dallas level, but Dallas isn't playing up to other teams level. And it, it's just like, you know, that has to come from the players. You know what I mean? I, I feel like the coaches can make those adjustments and ask for them, but, a lot of that comes back on the players, you know, sure. having, 
having to really, you know, take accountability for their actions and say, well, if these teams are playing up to our level, then we need to match that energy. Well, and it's the defensive stuff. I mean, Luca's quotes tonight, he said, you know, I, I think we've just got to be better at defense is something Luca said tonight. And, and he said, you know, a little later on, part, uh, you know, about the team's rebounding and second chance points, he responded and saying that's part of the defense and the physicality. I think those are two things we need to get way better at. And I cut, that's where I come back to, to their size, uh, because you're, you know, you're not going to get taller, but some of the effort you could tell was lacking at times. Like they gave up so many offensive rebounds and thankfully that's not been a problem the whole year. It has been a problem. Some games, whereas last year it felt like that was just the recurring thing night in and night out. Right. So, I mean, there's, there's things that they can improve on and whether they do is a matter. Some of it is just a matter of pride and effort and you know doing it for the whole game because if you're not going to be a great defensive team you can at least try hard and i think that'll make up for some of it it will make up for a lot of it and that's that's a super point kirk um but i mean just the defense in general is it's hard to say that you know there's going to be a lot of change because i feel like dallas they are who they are but yeah they they, the the teams they they give up put it like this they um the teams that they play, they shoot a lot of free throws and they shoot a lot of threes. Dallas, they don't shoot a lot of twos. Right. So Dallas is living and dying by the three, but these other teams are hitting their free throws, they're hitting their threes, and they're also hitting their twos. You know what I mean? And it kind of goes back to what adjustments is Dallas making in the in the games to slow down, you know, the three point shooting, you know, the the free throws and, and the two points. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, what adjustments are are they playing on the floor? Because I mean, kid can ask the players to kind of, you know, step up. But, I mean, God, if you think about it, it was a play when Josh just got just got dribbled on and just drove on. And I'm like, that that kind of goes back to, you know, kind of what are these guys doing to, to make themselves, you know, better defenders? Are they making, you know, adjustments mentally to kind of, you know, um, slow down the pace? Because they're not getting – the five losses, they're not – I mean – it's not something that was, you know, kind of teams are going to lose, but it's not something that they, they could have just said like, man, you know, um, we couldn't have did anything against these teams. You know, back right. in the day, nothing nobody could have did against the Golden State Warriors is just going to be a beat down. Right. But, you know, it's kind of like you were saying yesterday, who's looking at tape and who's looking at these opportunities for improvement. Right. And we just don't know and we won't know unless they actually start to improve. So, yeah. Well, man, thank you so much. You got anything else? That's it, Kirk, man. Enjoy the rest of your night. All right. Talk soon, man. I see Eric down there in the chat. He says, it's 11 p.m., guys. I have class at 7 in the morning. My man, my baby's going to wake me up at 1 a.m., 3 a.m., 5 a.m., and then my kid will wake my other child will wake me up at 7 a.m. So I, I feel you. It's just the point is, Eric, is sleep is for the dead and we don't get it anymore. <clears throat> Brian, what's going on? Man, how's it going? I'm good. You know. Yeah. yeah. It could be worse, I guess. Yeah, that's why but... I like doing these because it, if I spend some time on Twitter, I tend to get perpetually more pissed off. And it just kind of and – and I don't want to do that. I don't want to be mad. It's too early in the season. We're, we're nine and We're nine and five. Yeah, Twitter's an easy place to ramp up to hate. I will say, I I commend Krishna for his patience and his level headedness. Cause I'm not feeling that. I'm in the trade machine, man. <laughs> like all due respect. Like it's one thing to be ass. It's one thing to be getting paid. You can't be ass getting paid and out there giving half ass effort, bro. I'm sorry. I can't no, I can't do it. So you, you think you think Green's so effort's bad. pretty bad, huh? No, it's not even like Josh. I, I feel like Josh effort level, Josh's effort level tonight. I thought he played a better game. Was fun. He played a better yeah. game. He hit his shots, but defensively, which is because I was watching the game with some of my friends. It was the first time they'd ever like watched a Mavericks game with me. And they were like, hey, Josh, can we get a shot? That's good, right? I said, Yeah, that's cool. Go back on the other green on the other side and let me see you navigate some screens and stay in front of the ball handler. That's if he can do that, I don't care if he shoots 25% from three. Right. And early on, look good. And then, you know, and, and I'll, I'll even put that on him, the entire team. In the second half, we just 
gave up on perimeter rotations. It was really, yeah. really, really, really bad. It was really bad. Like, Lively got to the point where he looked discouraged. Dude, dudes were running right by him in the paint because anytime he tried to contest a shot, he either got called for a foul or they just made the bucket anyway. So Yes. And there were so many dudes. They were funneling dudes down to him, and it was apparent by the look on his face that that was not the plan. Like, yo, y'all are supposed to be able to hold your men in front of you for at least like two seconds. Like, give me a bit of breathing room to prepare to contest the shot before they get down to the paint. And dudes just walk into the lane. And then it opened up that stupid thing that the Mavs have done for like two years now that I hate, 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 which is we get killed so much inside that every time somebody drives, we peel in a man from the corner and we yep. start giving up wide open corner threes for an entire quarter. And that is how, uh, who is that, Malik Monk, I think, hit two straight threes from the exact same spot on the, the right, right wing because yep. his man peeled in on the drive. And yep. I was like, and that was right after De'Aaron Fox walked butt naked into like three straight above the break threes. And that's where I started looking at Josh like, all right, man, your ass is out of here. So like, well, and the, I, the I the was in that trade. Were you listening to the Mavs announcers tonight? I barely – yeah. So part of my problem with listening to the home team announcers, and this goes mm-hmm. for just about every team, is yeah. you don't get a lot of harsh criticism. And they kept talking about how, well, the Mavs are playing good defense for 20 seconds only to give up a late <laughs> shot. And it's just like. No, I hate that shit. It, it, no, they really weren't. They really weren't they were playing not, good defense. No. They, were playing, they were like scrambling like mad, but the Kings just kept working the ball around. That yeah. was like it wasn't good defense. It was the Kings just waiting for their chance to get a good shot. It wasn't late shot making. It was good shot making. When you see the dude that contest the shot had to run from the other corner all the way across the court to contest the shot, that's not good defense. That means somebody fucked up. Yep. <laughs> and that was happening all night, especially in the second half. I was really, really annoyed. And yeah, man. Like I had somebody like in uh one of the group DMs I'm in. Uh, I proposed a trade. I think it was right after Josh had gotten his extension. It was like Josh Maxey some seconds for PJ Washington and James Booknight that salary or whatever. Yep. Just because I was like, we need guys. We need a big wink. I think PJ's good. Let's fuck it. Let's see what happens. And uh, one of the homies was like, nah, Josh is young. Josh is good. We don't want to give up on him too early. When I talked to all my friends who are fans of other teams, they said, right, he's still young. Josh he is- still is young. Yeah, and, and they're like, and, and that's true. And he's like, yeah, and my, my friends who are fans of other teams, they all say, like, yeah, I, I really like Josh. I think Josh does good things. I'd like him on my team, you know, if we could have him. And every three games, I just went back in that group DM. I was like, what are your friends saying about Josh now? And today he was like, you know what? I forget who proposed that trade. You were fucking cooking. I apologize. And that's that's just kind of the season that has been for Josh. And really for this team because the issue with Josh – is kind of a microcosm of what is going on with our defense as a whole. Like we are not big enough on the perimeter. And because of that, all the other changes and upgrades that we've made, they just feel marginal, like lively, so good. And there were at times in this game, forget even like the Milwaukee game. There were times in this game, I guess like Sabonis where it felt like it didn't matter that lively was down there. Yeah. And it's like, he's too good for that to be the case. Grant is too good for that to be the case. LeBron James just sank the second of two free throws to give the the Lakers a one-point lead with two seconds left over the Rockets. Of course, he gets a foul call with two seconds left. Like, can you imagine Luka or LeBron, I'm sorry, Luka or Kyrie getting a foul call in a clutch situation? Dude, like, I, I, honestly, I didn't see Luca Kyrie get foul calls in regular, normal ass, low pressure situations tonight or the other night. So yeah. no, I cannot. And that's crazy because the Rockets will lead in the Lakers all game too. Just that's nice. insane. Okay, well, I think I want to go to bed. It is eleven yeah. o'clock. We got a late one on Wednesday against. Uh, is it Lakers or Clippers? I should know. Lakers this. first, then the Clippers on Sunday, I believe. Okay, that sounds right. Yeah, that yeah. and that'll be a that'll be well, a heck of a that'll be a heck of a test because the Lakers have some size, um, some finesse size, but size. And I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, Anthony Davis versus Derek Lively. Um, I think that could be some fun. I, you know, it, they'll, they'll probably put Grant Williams on 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 um, Anthony Davis, but 
Davis has been cooking this year, and and I think you need size on him. But that'll be that'll be a fun game. It'll be fun, but I'll tell you what, I can't have I can't have the JaVale McGee and the Christian Wood revenge games back to back. We got to win this game against the Lakers, mm. man. Because I can't for my mental health, I can't deal with that, bro. That's I cannot. I, I that's a good point. That's a good point. Brian, thanks so much for hanging out. We'll talk soon. Thanks for having me, dude. Peace. Have a good night. Go. All right. This has been fun. As always, if you could uh leave a review uh write another comment once this thing is over here on youtube head on over to youtube and subscribe that would be great also head on over to mavs moneyball not sure what we're going to be doing this week um kind of a weird week game wise just a game looks like uh very few games uh just due to thanksgiving and and that's and that sort of thing so we'll see uh all right it's been uh, kirk henderson of, of pod mavericks and this has been group therapy thanks so much for hanging out after a frustrating loss we'll talk soon go mavs